Hey boys and girls, welcome to your interactive read aloud time. Today we are continuing looking at the book, The Branch. It's written by Muriel Messier and Pierre Pratt. Now we've already read this story one time this week, but we're gonna dig a little bit deeper into it and we're gonna look at our vocabulary words again. And today we're gonna focus on our char the characters in the story, their thoughts and their feelings and how they react to different events that happened in the story, okay? So let's review our vocabulary words. Um, the first word that we learned about last week, or a few days ago, was the word castle. Now, most of you know what a castle is. A castle is a large, impressive house that usually has towers. We um, don't live in castle, castles in Fitzgerald. Most of us do not. Um, but maybe when you go to the beach, you might build a sand castle, a big, impressive house that has towers. Okay, so pay attention for that word as we read. Um, the second word that we came across was the word ache. Now, um, I know you've heard of people say they have a headache or they might have a back ache. If someone has an ache, that means they are suffering with pain somewhere in their body. Um, so an ache is when you have pain and it hurts really badly, okay? Um, the next word that we learned about was the word guard. Now, on this um, card, there is an officer and he's holding his hand out, blowing the whistle. It looks like he might be guarding um um, a building or protecting some people. That's what a guard, if you guard something, um, you protect it or you defend it from something or someone. Um, so um, sometimes we have dogs, um, pet dogs that might guard our yards. That means they're protecting our yards. They're protecting um, our house and us um, from people who might try to rob our house or try to hurt us. So um, a guard means to protect or defend from something or from someone. The fourth word that we discussed was the word um, potential. In the story, Mr. Frank said that that old branch had potential. Now, potential means to have the ability to become or develop something in the future. For example, that branch wasn't anything. It was just a broken branch that had fallen off the tree in the ice storm but it had the potential, the ability to become something in the future, to, to become something new or to be impressive in the future. So these are the four words I want you to focus on or pay attention to as we read today. Castle, ache, guard, and potential. Now in the story, there were not many characters. We had the little girl. Um, we never learned her name. She's actually the, the person telling the story. Um, I want you to focus on her today. Let's focus on how she thinks, what she thinks about, um, and how she's feeling, and why why does she feel those ways? Okay, now we're not we're gonna go through this book a little uh, bit quicker than we did the first day because we've already heard it one time. But I do want um, to point out the vocabulary words when we come to them, and I also want us to um, let's think together about the little girl in the story. It's past my bedtime, but I can't sleep. Maybe it's because I'm too excited about the holidays. Maybe it's because of the sound of the icy rain hitting my window. Tick, 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 tick. Now, something I just noticed about this story is that she says um, maybe she's too excited about the holidays. I wonder what holidays um, could be coming up. What do you guys think? It's cold outside. There's ice. Well, we have Christmas around um, winter time, So maybe um, Christmas holidays are coming up. When I finally doze off, I dream that I'm wearing a crown of icicles. My tree is my castle. My branch is my throne. I am queen of the storm. So she's dreaming that she's up on her branch. She's wearing an um, icicle crown. This makes me think of Elsa in Frozen. She likes all the, all the things made of ice. So she's just pretending. Creak, crack, crash, thud. My eyes snap open. What's that noise? I throw back my covers and rush to the window. What could that be? And we already know the branch has fallen down. Everything outside is covered in ice. It looks like the entire neighborhood has been wrapped in a heavy blanket of diamonds. It's beautiful, but it's a little scary too. And we talked a little bit about why does the little girl maybe think it's a little bit scary? I wonder if it's because when she looks out the window and sees all the ice, it's pretty because the sun's reflecting off the ice on the trees and on the cars and the ground and the houses. But I wonder if it's scary 
Um, maybe because she does see all of the broken trees, all of the branches that have fallen out of the trees. So um, even though it's pretty, it has caused a lot of damage in her neighborhood. Mom stands next to me at the window. Her breath makes a cloud on the ice. We're lucky this whole thing didn't come down, she says. What came down, I asked. That's when I see it. At the foot of my tree lies a big broken branch. I rushed down the stairs and out the door. That was the branch I sat on, jumped from, played under. It was my castle, my spy base, my ship. Now there's our word. Now we know that this tree or this branch is not the little girl's castle. She was not living in an oppressive home that, um, with towers, but she pretended that it was a castle. Remember, she pretended um, that she was the ice queen and that she was sitting up on that branch on her throne. So this was this branch was a place that she she went to pretend. Um, she spent a lot of time here. So I want you to realize that the it, the branch was not a real castle. She's pretending that it was a real castle. And look right here at her. I mean, this is a very obvious picture of how she's feeling. Um, head down, shoulders slumped, arms just hanging down beside her. She's looking at this branch. She's got a frown. Her eyes even look sad. Um, that lets us know that she is not feeling good about this right now. Um, she's sad. I try to pick up my branch, but it's too heavy. I run my fingers along the bumpy ice. Can we fix it? I'm afraid not, says mom. Can I keep it? It's just a branch. It's not just a branch to me. I played on this branch all the time. Mom touches the splintery part on the trunk where the branch used to be. And the splintery part, boys and girls, is the, the part that broke away from the trunk of the tree. And remember, the trunk of the tree is the, the main part of the tree um, that is holding up the branches, okay? So the splintery part is where the branch broke away from the tree. All right, you can keep it for a little while, but I want but I want to keep it forever. We'll see, said Mom, squeezing my hand. I know that squeeze means probably not. So that makes me think that in the past when the little girl has wanted something and Mom kind of squeezes her hand and says, we'll see, that she probably doesn't get what she wants, um, and she knows that. So she's she probably knows in her head that she's not going to be able to keep this branch forever. <laughs> As I look around, I see more broken branches in the yards, in the streets, stuck upside down in the trees. I watch my neighbors digging and scraping. They gather broken branches and carry them to the curb, making big heaps like big beaver dams in our city. Um, and remember, this might be the part that she thought was scary, seeing all these broken branches and all these limbs across her whole neighborhood. That might have been the scary part of the snowstorm. Workers in shiny coats are clearing the road. They climb ladders, fix wires, wrap yellow tape around trees, and put orange cones on the sidewalk. Everybody is so busy. I wish I could climb my tree to watch them, but I can't. Now, I want you to think about the workers that are in the city. We didn't talk about this the other day. Workers in shiny coats. I wonder if, there's, if the shiny coat she's talking about is maybe like a raincoat. Maybe, because um, raincoats sometimes look slick and um, shiny. Um, she says they're climbing ladders. Why do you think they're climbing ladders? What, why would people be climbing ladders after a ice storm? I would imagine, here's like, you can tell like a fireman right here climbing the ladder. I would imagine they're, climb, they're having to climb up these trees to cut off branches that maybe didn't break all the way off. Maybe they just kind of snapped or are hanging down, so they might have to cut some extra branches off the trees. She said they're also fixing wires. You know, during an ice storm, um, when those limbs get so heavy with the ice, and they break off, they might um, break off onto a power line. So that means people might not have power right now. So um, the electrical workers might have to climb up and fix the wires. She says some of the people are wrapping yellow tape around trees. Usually when you see yellow tape um, around trees or around anything, that means like caution, be careful, um, that it might not be safe. So maybe they're kind of blocking off some parts of the road or parts of the sidewalk so that people um, will not go near them. And she says they're also putting out orange cones, orange cones on the sidewalk. And that makes me think of caution as well. When we see cones like on a sidewalk or um, on a street, that means maybe there's a hole or maybe there's something that's not safe there that we need to be careful from. So there's, there's a lot of work going on right now after this um, ice storm. My next door neighbor, Mr. Frank, 
is out with his chainsaw. And you can see Mr. Frank here. And we talked a little bit about how he's cutting down some broken off branches from his tree that maybe didn't break all the way off, but he's having to clean up. The buzzing makes my ears ache. So there's that word again. So if she's got ache right now as he's buzzing with the chainsaw, that means her ears are hurting. She has pain in her ears. So that makes me think that the sound of this chainsaw is very loud. The buzzing make my ears ache, but I won't go back inside. I block my ears and I guard my branch. Now, if she is guarding her branch, she wants to make sure that nobody comes to take it or chop it away because that's what everybody are that's what they're doing right now. They're cleaning up all the broken limbs, all of the broken branches that are have fallen in the neighborhood. So she's afraid that if she leaves her branch, then somebody's going to think it's just trash. And we know that it's not trash to her. She loves this branch. Um, she's sad about it falling from the tree. And so she doesn't want anybody to just haul it off to be burned or chopped up into firewood. She wants to guard it. That means she wants to protect it. Um, just like we talked about the dogs might be protecting your yard from something that might not be safe. She wants to guard her branch and keep it safe um, from anyone that might think it's just trash and might want to take it away. Finally, Mr. Frank stops sawing when he catches sight of me over the fence. Why the long face? Now, when Mr. Frank says, why the long face, he means, why are you so sad? When, if you ever hear anybody say, why such a long face? Why does your face look so long? They're not talking about it really looks so long. It, you just look sad. My favorite branch broke. Oh, I see. So what are you going to do with it? I shrug. It's just a branch. Just a branch? But it was your favorite branch, right? I nod. That's what I thought. That branch is full of potential. What's potential? I ask. It means it's worth keeping. Now, remember we talked about if something has potential, that means it has the hope to become or develop into something into the future. So, Mr. Frank has now created a little speck of hope in the little girl. Because she thinks her mom's not going to let her keep it. Um, she's, it's just a branch, she says. Even though she wants to keep it and she's sad about it, she knows deep down that her mom's not going to let her keep this branch forever. But when she talks to Mr. Frank, he gives her a little speck of hope. And he says, just a branch? I thought it was your favorite branch. It has potential. That means it could become something more in the future. So let's see how she's feeling about this. Mr. Frank hands me a small piece of wood. What do you see? A piece of wood? Sure, but what could it become? So here's the little stick, just a stick that's fallen out of the tree. Mom comes over carrying mugs of hot chocolate. Hi, Frank. I see part of your tree came down, too. Yep, that was quite a storm we have. We're guessing what's hiding inside the wood, I tell Mom. Mr. Frank chuckles at Mom's puzzled look. I build things from salvaged wood, said Mr. Frank. With some imagination, each broken piece can become something great. And remember, we talked about the word salvaged. Something that is salvaged is saved. So Mr. Part, one, one thing that he does, maybe for his job or maybe just for fun, is that he takes um, old wood, salvaged wood, saved wood that nobody else wants, and he turns it into something new, something great, something with potential. Um, that when you look at just a stick, you might not see it. But with a little bit of um, thought, a little bit of care, a little bit of work, it can be turned into something amazing, something with awesome potential. I look at my favorite branch. It does have potential. So she's starting to think it can be something great in the future. It is worth saving, she's thinking. I concentrate and I squint and then I have an idea. I know what my branch can become. I knew you would, said Mr. Frank. What is it, asked mom. Is it a walking stick? A coat rack? A birdhouse? And guys, wood can be made into a walking stick, a coat rack, or a birdhouse. You know, all of those things are made from wood. But the little girl says, no, it's even better. I say, I cut my hand and I whisper into Mr. Frank's ear and he says, oh, good idea. But I don't know how to make it, I say. I can help you, says Mr. Frank. I have the tools and I have the time. 
All you need is a little elbow grease. That means all you need is a little bit of work. Um, I can help you. I have the tools. I have the time. All we got to do is put a little bit of work in. That's what he means when he says elbow grease. Put a little work in. So you can see the little girl and Frank over here coming up with a plan. So the little girl has hope now. She couldn't do this on her own, but with the help of a good friend, Mr. Frank, now she's got this idea to take her old branch that has was useless and turn it into something with potential, turn it into something useful. Mr. Frank's workshop smells sweet like Sunday breakfast. We work together on weekends and sometimes after school. He shows me how to use the tools to make my branch into something new. So here they are, they're getting started in the tool shed. We draw plans, we measure, we saw, we saw some more. We dry the wood, then we wait and we wait and we wait. So they are working hard on this plan that the little girl has. We plane it, that means they make it smooth. We make holes, we sand it, then we varnish it. Three coats to make it last a long, long time. So they are working really hard together to get this project finished up with her old branch. And then finally, at the end of the story, it wasn't just a branch, it was my branch. The one I sat on, jumped from, played under. It was my castle. It was my spy base, my ship. Here's Mr. Frank climbing up into the original tree. And you can see this is where the branch has broken off and he's holding something in his hand with a rope and the little girl's watching. So they must be taking what they have made or built up the tree, let's see. And it still is. So at the end of the story, Mr. Frank and the little girl took that old branch, worked really hard with their ideas, um, their friendship, they developed a friendship by working on this together and Mr. Frank was able to teach the little girl how to use the tools and how to design this and how to plan this. And then they turned it into something great. They used the branch to make a swing. Then they hung it back up in the same tree that the branch had fallen out of to where she still could pretend it was a castle. She still could pretend it was a spy base and she could jump from it, she could play from it. And now look at her face. How was the little girl feeling at the end of the story? She looks very, very happy. She's still got her branch. It doesn't look the same. She, it doesn't, she couldn't play on it the exact same way, but she's still got her branch that's turned into something new and they did it together. So that's the end of the story. I want you to um, think about these words um, as we wrap up today. Castle, ache, guard, and potential. And I want you to check out your seesaw for your next activity involving these vocabulary words and an activity on how the little girl um, thought and felt throughout the story and what made her change.